Welcome everyone to this year's Yule stream with me, myself, and Violet, of Hello. course. So, uh, you know, every every year for ten years, I've always wanted to, like, sum up, you know, the end of the year in terms of my, you know, you know, gaming, uh, you know, gaming experiences, you know, like a top ten list or like you know, a top five, bottom five, and, you know, I would start a script, but the holidays are always so busy and I never have enough time and I've always dropped it. I mean, even this year I had a big idea planned out, but I tried to do it all at the end of the year, right when, you know, I'm at my most busiest time. So I figured, you know, why not? We'll go ahead and uh, do a Yule stream, and it'll be a gaming log of all my experiences that I've, that I've had throughout the year, and uh, we'll, we'll just call it a Yule log. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll uh, go ahead and get things going. Cowboy time. So uh, let me go ahead. So uh, while uh, Violet loads up uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, let me explain how this is going to work. Uh, let me test and see if the chat box works. Test. Alright, showing up just fine. That'll do. So, um. Yeah, it, it is. Okay. But I can't see it at all on my screen. No, I'm on mobile. I'm on mobile. So, uh, I have 39 games that I've beaten throughout the year, and I want to go ahead and just kind of talk about them, kind of chat about them, kind of talk at you, Violet, about it, and talk <laughs> at you, the audience, about it. Maybe we can get some discussion about that. All right. So, uh, what I, I've prepared box art. So what it means is that I have the, uh, the box art of the game I've beaten. This is just an obvious placeholder, uh, you see. <laughs> I've got the name of the game in question, and the date at which I beat it. So, um, this is gonna be in two parts. I'll do the first half with uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 and the second half with Death Stranding. So, uh, let's just, uh, let's just get right to it, fellas. And I'm probably not gonna do any story. I'm just gonna run around and Hello, Arthur. do whatever. So you're here at the camp, you're gonna do story. <laughs> probably. Well then, I'll, I'll uh, get to our first game then. TMNT The Cowabunga Collection. Oh no. What do you mean, oh no? The top. Uh oh. Uh, one second. Okay, we're back. Awesome. Alright, so. The first game, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Collection, the Cowabunga Collection. Uh, I got this on an impulse buy, and I realized two things about myself uh, when, I, uh, when I played this. Uh, one, I am a huge fan of uh, game anthologies. Yeah. Like, I don't care how, how good or how crap the ports are, I just like having them. Just like that. Yeah, I mean, it's like the Tales of Symphonia re uh, remastered on Switch sucks, but I have it on Switch. It's nice. Yeah. Uh, but I, I love uh, like collections too because they always have like bonus stuff as well. And uh, this one has thirteen TMNT games. Thirteen of them. And then uh, most of them are, are uh, the arcade classics and the ports of those arcade classics to kind of puff out, you know, the, the the roster, I suppose. Sure. So you got like the original arcade, of course, but then you have like, you know, the original NES game, you know, the one where the, the, the nerd did. But you also have the NES port of the original arcade game, and that was the one that I played when I was a kid. I'm like, oh, this is on here? Oh, shit! That's cool! Dang! Yeah, I think I've only played the one for the NES. Well, they got that, yeah. too. They, they, they got like three versions of the Tournament Fighter game. They, they, they've got like two or three crappy Game Boy games, as well as the Japanese versions of each of them. It's it's pretty extensive. It's it's kind of neat. It's a little on the pricier side, but, uh, you know, I, I, I had some fun with it. And the second thing I realized that I was a little bit of a TMNT fan. I didn't I didn't even realize it. Because I, I have a lot of... Uh, I have a lot of uh, unusual, uh, like, trivia about the Turtles. It's like, you know, I think anyone who knows about Venus de Milo can't say that they're not a fan anymore. Like, like, seriously. That's so, the lady turtle, right? Yeah. So the cool thing about the, the Kawabunga collection yeah. is that at any point in the game, they have, they have included, like, a, uh, a no-hit playthrough. You can just, and uh, you can jump in at any time. So if you want to get the trophies in this game, you can just put on this no-hit playthrough, skip to the very end, jump in right at the very last hit, save the game, come back, and then you can just load that up, 
kill the boss with that last hit, and you've beaten the game. Here's your trophy. <laughs> it was an easy platinum, but it was it was a lot of fun. But yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. This is like the, one of the best things Konami's done. Konami's just releasing ports of their games and not doing anything with them, and that's all you can ask for, really. Yeah. Alright, next game. Persona 5 Royal. Ah, uh, yes. It's kind of a... Kind of an okay game, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's fine. I suppose. Game I've audio. never played it. Go down to How's that? Training looks a bit more different than her. <laughs> yeah, that's not what we're playing. Well, Persona 5 Royal. I, I uh, played Persona 5 when it first came out. I, w I was there day one, and uh, I loved it like everybody else did. I mean, it's a great game. Seriously. And then uh, Persona 5 Royal came out and says, Oh, hey, you want to buy the same game again, but we added, like, a, like you know, just, just you know, uh, an extra story bit? It's like they Persona 5 Gold, Persona 4 Golden, basically. And I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, Persona 5's still fresh in my mind, and I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I can jump down that hole again. Well, then they came to modern consoles, and I got the steel book for a PS5 for a steel. <laughs> and, and so I, I played through steel it. Steel for a steel. So I played through it, and it was uh, it, 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 it was great. It's one of the one of the most elite JRPGs out there. Like I think it should be up there with uh, you know games like Chrono Trigger or uh, you know Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII, or VI, whatever. Yeah, because it's, it's it's something special. I mean the way it's like influenced so many games since it came out. Like you like you can see how that magnificent UI has like delved into so many other games. Like, Danganronpa 3 looks way different than Danganronpa, you know, 2, because, you know, it's all, like, you know, stylized and all that. Same thing with, uh, even the Science Adventure series, with, with like, uh, Occultic 9. That looks exactly like Persona 5. At the end, you know, of course, Masahiro Sakurai said, oh, oh, man, like, the UI for Persona 5 is, like, the best, and he's a guy who loves his menuing. <laughs> he just can't talk, he just can't get away from it. Thank you. And, uh... Some. Right, so... Uh, number one waifu for, for Persona 5. Who is it? For me? For, well, anybody who wants to... Who wants Let's to answer say, that uh... question. <laughs> I mean, I'm finding myself to be a Makoto stan. Because that girl's got it together. Oh, I don't know, Tai Takemi is still pretty good. At least her first voice in the whole version. But yeah, Persona 5, great game. Everyone should play it and love it because it's because it's amazing. Next game. Okay. Okay. Chaos Head Noah. Oh god. <laughs> Come on, girl. I have not seen Godzilla minus one. Because yeah, I don't watch a lot of Godzilla movies. It yeah, just, we don't watch Godzilla. Um, you know, I understand the, the, the appeal and beauty of Kaiju, but it's just not for me. But I hear this one's like, the one! Oh, this one's the one! Because I heard that like two times already before. Anyway, Chaos Head Noah. This game has been just an absolute thorn in my side ever since I started playing it. Uh, my favorite visual novel of all time is uh, Steins Gate. It's part of a larger series called Science Adventure. And uh, recently, Spike Chunsoft yep. has been re-releasing some of the other games in the series. You know, like Robotics Notes, and uh, the various Steins Gate spin-offs, and uh, sequels and all that. And uh, back in 2022, they released uh, the first game in the series, Chaos Head Noah, as well as its spiritual uh, sequel, Chaos Child, in one kind of bundle or whatever. And, uh... Yeah, it's, it's been untranslated for so many years, like Chaos Child came out in the West way before uh, Chaos Head Noah did, which is kind of weird. But this game, like, is absolute trash. <laughs> it is probably one of the worst visual novels I have ever played. Um, the main character is the biggest problem. Yeah. He is an absolute piece of shit, and, you know, I know that, you know, some characters are pieces of shit, like Arthur Morgan here can be an absolute piece of shit, but... <laughs> you, like, feel for the guy. He he does things. He's proactive, you know? What the main character of Chaos Head Noah does is, is he's just a guy who lives up in a trailer on top of a building 
and just plays this mid-level MMORPG all day, every day. He barely goes to school, he has no friends, and the friends he does have, he just regards with such contempt and like, why do you always talk to me? He, he just, he, just, he's a little misanthrope who just okay, accuses girl. everybody around him of being just an idiot. And it's it's an art to make bad people likable. Well, how do you make them like? like there's, why would I want to play it then? So then when, when, when the girls show up, oh, the girls show up. That, that, like, he doesn't have any agency or anything. He just kind of, like, reacts to it. It's like, oh, this is so dumb. I want to go home. <laughs> this, this is a game that uh, Steam was almost like, hey, I don't think we want this on our platform. Like, at the 11th hour, they, they came in and said, hey, yeah, we're not releasing this on Steam. They got it fixed and all that, but, man, yikes, is, is, is it a yikes game, all right? So, um... This game is based on delusions. So, uh, the way that the path splits off is that you can choose between, like, you know, a positive, uh, delusion, where he pretends that he sees something, like, you know, probably sexual in nature. Yeah. Uh, a negative, uh, uh, delusion, where he experiences something violent, probably, and mean-spirited and cruel, and a neutral when, you know, it just happens and he just whines and pisses his pants or something. So, a lot of the sexual stuff happens to high school girls, and so, and even though it's not real, you can see why Val would be like, hey, hey whoa, 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 uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Fucking hate it. And, uh, the translation on this is garbage. Like, it is, it is awful. They're, like, it's lazy, it's absolutely blunt force translated, so that, like, there's, 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 like, all translation, no localization, if you know what I mean. It's just, it's, it's just sloppy. They, they straight up just left their, their own, like, notes in, in the, in, like, the tips log. Like, you know, oh, we'll do this one later, basically. Just lazy shit. There's no character. They, they have no idea how to, like, when things get violent and things get really violent, they have no idea of how to escalate that violence, so they just, they just write the most gore-inducing oh thing really? ever. So it's like, you know, when she threw the pillar at my arm, it mashed into a pile of gore and, I just, and it broke everything. So then I stood back up pile and I- meaty flesh that's blood dripping and- yeah. So then I stood back up and I grabbed the metal pipe with my hand and- and pain seared through me. I felt like I could die 12 times. It's really poorly done and I absolutely despise it. So I would like to stop talking about it now and put it in the back of my mind and forget that it ever happened. And uh, it's really good to know that after this shitty game, they made the best game in the series, which was Steins Gate. And it kind of plateaued from there, we'll be honest with you. All right, next game. Vampire Survivors. This hey. is this is this is where uh, the beating the game uh, date kind of <laughs> runs through some problems. Because I I beat the game. I finished I it. Got all the got, got all the achievements. All all of the everything on February second of this year. Hell yeah. Uh, what what game is what? that? What? What uh, Vampire Survivors? Or, oh this oh this is Red Dead Redemption Two. Yes. Do you know which game you're talking about? I'm talking about a lot of games here. Anyway, I beat Vampire Survivors on February 2nd, got the, got the achievements, all the trophies, you know, all that, whatever, all the unlockables. And then they, they released an update. They added three more achievements. So I got all those. And they added more DLC. They added more achievements. They added more stages. And they just kept adding more stuff. And then the Switch version came out. And now they have more DLC coming out for that. And now they have the adventures coming out for that. It just never stops giving me stuff to do. But man, what a good fucking game it is! Yeah. I can't stop playing I love, it! I love playing it. No, oh, I can't. I just can't stop playing it. Uh, I've got like what seventy hours or whatever on Steam. I really wish they'd hurry up and get the adventures and the uh, and the uh, what the Among Us DLC, whatever that is. Yeah. I guess I have to get that. You know, looks fun. I'm waiting for that to come to st to Switch. It's taking its sweet its, its sweet time. Hopefully, with my luck, it'll be here tomorrow, or right as I'm saying this sentence right now. <laughs> See, what I wanted to do for this for the Yule stream was I wanted to get like th the three of us together to do some co oh! stuff. Fucking really? Because there's like so many like uh, you know cheat characters and all that, and there's so much stuff. Let's see how much we can make the Switch chug. It'd be fun. But another day. For now, let's move on. 
Pokemon Scarlet. Niskel and I uh, spent a good chunk, a good good couple of weeks, I think, just uh, plowing through Scarlet and Violet, uh, Violet, trying to get through our Pokedexes, and uh, well, I think we have to do it again. <laughs> yeah, cuts my switch on fire. <laughs> oh no! We reached the 70th minute. Oh jeez! Yeah. So we have. Uh, I've never really gotten the. A complete Pokedex ever in any Pokemon game I've ever played. Not without the use of the cheats, I mean, you know. <laughs> I have Ruby. You did Ruby? Uh huh. You traded with Sapphire? Yeah. Oh. Well, I considered uh, February 26th the day that I completed the Pokedex. I completed a, an actual Pokedex for the first time. Yep. And it's just a really momentous occasion. Now we've got the DLC, gotta go through that too. I've actually kind of been enjoying the DLC. I've only got like the, through like, I'd say halfway through the first part of it, I guess. I don't know. But, uh, I've been having a good time. Scarlet and Violet's really good, despite all the technical problems. I don't mind them too much. It's just, it, it is what it is. Really hope that they, uh, keep this up, or at least uh, take their time on making the next one, So it, because they can't really hold on to this pattern of making a cheap game every year. They need to, like, add that polish that people, th like, fell in love with already. Alright, next one! Katamari Damachi Reroll! Uh, it is a remake of the very first Katama uh, Katamari Damachi game for PS2. That was a game I never played. I, like so many others, uh, pl started playing uh, We Love Katamari, the sequel. Which was better and had more gameplay ideas and the soundtrack was better and everything was just was just better about it. But I'm playing this game and it's like it's the it's still stuck in that, oh, this is a game for Japanese children type deal, so it's got the you know, these uh, kinds of songs you hear on Japanese preschool shows, I guess. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of pianos, a lot of you know, okay, then, soft motherly figures singing the songs and all that. You know, yeah. a lot, a lot, a lot of marches, yeah. a lot of just, a lot of children singing too. You know, la, 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 la. it's, it's not, it's kind of a disconnect as to where Katamari went after that game. So uh, I didn't really have. That a... is a horse, and I didn't mean to shoot the horse. So you can, you, you can pick about any other Katamari game. We love Katamari. Beautiful Katamari. Uh, uh, Katamari Forever. Those are way better Katamari experiences. But, but this one, however, it feels like every time that I bump into something, like even just a little nudge, a little eh, I lose like three objects. It is so hard to hold on to anything right, in the remake to Katamari Damachi. I don't know if it was like that in the, in the original game, but it's yeah. not like that in any other game. Like, I, like I, I played the Switch version of a uh, re-roll, and I just couldn't hold on to anything. I, like, I would gain a meter, and then I would lose it just by hitting something. Just, I thought I could, I could pull up. It was, it was ridiculous. Then I, then I uh, throw in Katamari Forever, and I try and roll this, you know, I try and roll something up, and I hit something, and I, I get knocked back a little bit, and maybe one thing gets dislodged. It's, it's way more playable, and it's way better. So I don't recommend this one. But... The We Love Katamari uh, uh, remake, that's actually pretty good. It's a little lesser than the original, I think, but that's just my rose, my uh, rose-tinted glasses and nostalgia talking for me there. It is what it is. So yeah, uh, get the remake. You can probably skip this one, but if you can get it for cheap, then well, hey, why not? I mean, I got it for five bucks. Why not? Next up is Shin Megami Tensei Five. When am I ever gonna learn my lesson when it comes to these games? Hmm? I don't know. See, I, th I think what it is is that I was uh, still on my Persona 5 Royal kick. You know, it's like, oh wow, Persona 5 so great, Persona so cool, and so is Shin Megami Tensei. Oh, Atlas is great. You, you know what? I think I'm gonna go ahead and pop Shin Megami Tensei 5 back in. I didn't finish that okay. one yet. Settle down there. And uh, I realized why I didn't. It's very tedious and very monotonous and very brutal. But luckily. They added some uh, DLC just for me. They gave me cheap, easy, baby bones. Pixie can defeat entire deities in one hit difficulty <laughs> mode. And that was that was the only way I could make it to the end. So this big boss shows up and says, Ha ha, you are weak, human. You will not do anything. And then I, like, 
in like 10 turns I take him down with just some powerful spells like, HOW CAN THIS BE?! It's, it, it, it feels nice. But it, what doesn't feel nice is running around uh, a whole bunch of ruined landscapes, not a lot of uh, differentiation between environments, doing samey repetitive, uh, you know, kind of, kind of fights, it's just not that fun. <laughs> Going for Persona 5 to Shimming him at Tensai 5 is certainly uh, a lurch, I gotta say. But I mean, yep. is it bad? Not really. I mean, it's it's okay. It's just kind of it's just kind of whatever. But it's just middle of the road. Pe th th that's why people are way more excited for Persona Six than Shimming sh than Shimming Ami Tensai Six. Right. You know what I mean. So whatever you want to get to do in that uh, Atlas, instead of making anything else besides that, go right ahead. We'll be here for it. Next up. Uh, Pizza Tower. I mean, I had to beat it for the Let's Play, you know. Uh, what's to say? I love this game. It's so great. It's, it's magnificent. It's basically like they combined all my favorite cartoons with, uh, one of my favorite Game Boy Color games of the time, Wario Land 3. And it turned out to be nothing like Wario Land 3. It's, it, it, it was actually more like a 2D Sonic, almost, with its intense speeds and all that. Man, I loved it! So good! Need to make more of it. They should have won that award. I'm, like, I'm mad for them. I mean, of course I'm not gonna tell them to, you know, like, you need to harass other devs or other games for that. Do not do that, of course. But they really should have won. They put their heart into it. They, they, they captured the soul of the internet with that. And it's just, just so captivating. Every frame has just got so much love into it. But I'd be up for a sequel. I'd be up for a Switch ports. Just, you know, anything more from these guys to get them more money. You know, go for it. Yeah. What, what, what a great, fantastic game. Next. Elden Ring. Ha! All right, so I beat Elden Ring uh, on the PS4, you know, like, the year it came out. You know, all that. Then I got a PS5. The PS5 version came with Elden Ring. So I play that and beat that again, too. So... Uh, Elden Ring is one of my favorite games of all time. Like, it's... It's really giving Okami... It's giving Okami a run for its money. That's how good it is. It's... It's... It's almost ready to dethrone it if it hasn't already. Changes from the... Changes every day, I think. But, uh... See, I've been kind of... I've been getting excited, uh... You know, thinking about getting back in the, in the Let's Play. When we pick back up, it's like, there's, there's so much we could do, because we could... We could go down south and check out more of the Weeping Peninsula. We could go into Kaelid and get uh, get uh, that that special spell. We can uh, just go into Rai Lucaria, you know, right right away. We can go check out the caves and do this quest. We can go and do this quest over here. We can just skip all that and go over here, or we can skip getting that. And we can just skip that and go right up here. Oh, it's just so much you can do in this game. It's so open and so free, and putting okay. the Dark Souls formula on top of that just it's just oh, it's perfection. And of course, all the lore yeah. behind it is just, 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 just magnanimous. The DLC is going to come out right when the series ends, isn't it? It's going to be like, you know, the series will probably go until November. And it's like, all right, that's a wrap on Elden Ring. We, we, just, we just got our ending, and now it's all done. And the day after, they're going to, that's going to be like probably the Game Awards. They're going to announce a release date for Shadow of the Earth Tree. It'll be like February or something. And then back, back in the lab again. But I wouldn't mind that at all. Because I love all the work. Next up, it is... Resident Evil 4 Remake! There's been a lot of discourse about whether this is a good remake or not. It's like, oh, you, 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 this one has no spirit and all that. And, you know, there's, there's not enough camp. And the way I see it, it's two cakes. I've always uh, compared Resident Evil to horror films. And you can like the original as well as the remake. There's plenty of horror films like that. Evil yeah. Dead, like Evil Dead for one. Definitely, they got remade twice with the sequel. So the fact that one's better than the other, like, there's no reason to entertain the thought of that. They're, they're both excellent games, and this one, is, they, they tried really hard. It's like they fully realized the ideas that, res that the original was trying to go for. 
they made it a lot tighter, and then they fleshed out the characters and the backstories and all that. And it's just... I, I love it. It's so good. I haven't received anything from you in a while, Mr. Morgan. All right, Ever. All right, that's bullshit because uh, I see you donating to this guy all the time. All the time. Every fucking day I give him meat. It's like when you start donating to them and start doing things they expect it and they get all okay, uppity if you don't give them anything. All right, next up. The murder right. of Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, I counted this. So for April Many Fools, thanks, Mr. Morgan. a lot of companies like try to throw out, like you know a fun I'm little game that craft. they make us more like. Morgan. I think there was a Colonel Sanders dating sim. Yeah. But uh, that didn't have any effect on me because I don't remember any of it. Like I remember there was Colonel Sanders and we had to. I don't. I I I I, I barely remember that. Remember. You yeah, won't maybe that's for the better. Something like this anywhere else. This is made entirely from the uh, Sonic Social uh, media team, I guess. And they just made a cute little visual novel where Sonic gets <laughs> murdered. Gonna think and we have to find it. his killer, Agatha Christie, on the on the Orient Express uh, style. <laughs> no, and everyone's in their little costumes, and you know, it, I think it gives something that a lot of Sonic fans have been waiting for for years, and that's character interaction. You know. Uh, Having Shadow being his sassy self you know, about getting the high score and, you know, Tails being, you know, a detective and Amy being a little bit of a brat on her right. birthday. Eggman being a de uh, dad at the end. Everybody loves that. That's the kind of stuff that people uh, people want. And I think that's something that Sonic and Sega team needs to... Sega and Sonic team needs to capitalize on. Not saying they gotta go full visual novel, but they want to, they want to step in the right direction for Sonic Frontiers. Now if they can actually do some... Well, I knew they wouldn't kill Sonic. Of course they wouldn't kill Sonic. Not not for real. Of course they wouldn't. Right. Killing Sonic is what Sonic fans wanted, lol. <laughs> yeah. Maybe some Sonic fans, though. But it's like, yes, we really murdered Sonic the Hedgehog. They're, they're not, they're not going to kill Sonic the Hedgehog on, on April 1st. No way. I think some people were deluding themselves like that. All right, next to the real game, the Artful Escape. This was just a uh, kind of fodder I had, flexing my PlayStation Plus subscription. Uh, this is what I call uh, indie games that end too soon. You know the type. You pick up this uh, this indie game. It's got the charming art style. It's got a pretty neat gameplay mechanic. It's pretty cool. You know, cool characters and cool voice acting and all that. And then it just uh, stops basically what this game is. You start out as this, uh, this nerd, this dork, who won't amount to anything. Sorry, that's Sugar, that's just how it is. You're not gonna amount to anything, you, you weird, dorky, less of the unlikely milk toast looking son of a gun. He's like, I'm gonna be a musician. Yep. But he has no confidence. Sure. And then he gets abducted by, like, you know, prog rock aliens, I guess, or something. And then he becomes an international superstar by just mashing on the buttons a whole bunch and having some filtered guitar sounds. Uh, it's very artistic. It's kind of pseudo platformy. There's not really much to it. It's uh, it's a game. It's a game. But then when you finish one of the set pieces, like all right, you all right, you got to go home now. Bye. And then you're just you're just home with, and your powers are gone. But then you walk into the new world with your uh, newfound abilities and newfound confidence and all that. It's not the greatest I don't think, but it, it, it's, it's artistic. It's interesting, at least. Yeah. Stuck with me a bit, I guess. It's okay. Easy platinum, though. Persona 3 Dancing and Persona 5 Dancing Endless Night Collection. Uh, Persona 4 doesn't count because my copy didn't have that version. A little map out of it. <laughs> so I like uh, rhythm games. You know, it's good rhythm games, that is. I mean, I'm not a D&D &D guy, but I'm a Guitar Hero guy. And, uh, I don't really play the Love Live games, but I play this. Uh, good music. That's what kept me coming back, I suppose. I played all three of the of the games on Vita. I even imported uh, Persona 3 Dancing and Persona 5 Dancing on Vita. And just damn good music. That's what kept me coming back. Like, even after I got the Platinum on Persona or on uh, Persona 4 Dancing, I just kind of got back and just played the song just because it was good. 
I know, girl. Just give me a second. What's cool about Persona 3 and Persona 5 dancing is that they were artists I recognized on there. I'm like, oh, hey, Hideki, uh... Shit, I'm afraid I'm not I'm like I'm saying, man. Hideki Naganuma's on there. Hey, look, look at that. Fucking Toa Tei's on there? Sweet. And these are people that, these are people I recognize. Like, that's that, that, that's cool to be... It's like, hey, I did recognize that song. I recognize that person on that album, on that soundtrack. And, uh... Honestly, the, the the rhythm section is kind of uh, kind of addicting. Just just feels good. I gotta say, however, uh, I turned off all my friends cheering me on. That got annoying quickly. Uh -huh. Yes, it, yes, it did. Because when you're doing when you're like you know trying to concentrate on, on keeping the beat and vibing out to the fucking soundtrack and trying to hit the buttons on time and do the scratches when on time, you'll have your friends going, "All right." Way to go, you can go, senpai! You know, I was like, oh, I was like, you, you go, Joker! And then he goes, one, two, three, get you. Know, I'm not off track. I turn that off immediately. Not having that, no way. And I really didn't care much about the story bits either. They didn't really matter too much. And that's how it, the story kind of is. It doesn't really matter too much. It's like, you're here because the first one did well. So now we decided, and so now between uh, the, the, uh, yeah, throw up in Persona 3, the fucking Velvet Room girl. Elizabeth! <laughs> Between Elizabeth and, and the twins, it's like, let's see who can have a better dance performance in the Velvet Room. And yeah, yeah it's they're kind of, like, loosely connected in a way. I don't know, it's kind of fun. Next up! The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Oh boy! I said when the trailer for Tears of the Kingdom dropped. Tears of the Kingdom is coming out next year. That's going to be cool. I've already beat a a Breath of the Wild on Wii U, but uh, I got the Switch version and I never really finished that. So, hey, we'll take the time and we'll get 100% on that game. I said in January as the release date was coming closer. Yep, I'll go ahead yep. and play through Breath of the Wild when Tears of the Kingdom is coming out, I said in March. Then I said uh, about, what, two days before the game came out. Oh, shit. So I just raced oh, through. Shit. So I just raced through whatever uh, what what data I had, and uh, just beat the game that night, like before right, Breath of the Wa uh, Tears of the Kingdom came out. Just to say, I was all refreshed and prepared to go. Hey, who's that? Man coming in. Roll out the red carpet. How do they like not know it's you? I mean, you've come back here like so many times. I don't know. It's like I'm dressed the same. Well, I don't need to say. Breath of the Wild is, is a great game. It's a great game. Like, even if you're not big on you it, you can at least recognize its strengths. Anymore, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Good Do morning, I have a bunch Parker. of viscera on me? All you're doing is hunting. Which I suppose is good for the everybody there. Yeah. Morning, Mr. Morgan. So yeah, Bre Breath of the Wild, uh, absolutely capti uh, captivating game. Influential in every way. Just, just right. grade Let A stuff. Because all that led up to, of course, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, I keep saying this. Uh, this game took the entire month of May away from me. Uh-huh. I had... Uh, him and I fought over it. Yeah, t uh, until I went and got my own copy, basically. Yes, had to do that. So, I mean... It, oh, no, it did come out, but uh, it, it, it was late getting here, so... Uh, we spent, like, a whole day, uh, you know, fighting over who would, who would uh, get the version that we did have. But, but uh, yeah, I lost so many hours going through Tears of the Kingdom. I plowed through that game. And, uh, it's... It's everything I wanted, actually. Yep. It, yeah, everything that I wanted out of Breath of the Wild, it gave me in Tears of the Kingdom. It gave me more story bits. Uh, I was absolutely captivated by the story, trying to unravel the mystery at, at the end of it. And when I realized, I was like... <gasps> Oh my god! And it's, it, it was just really neat, the, you know, the reveals on so many things. Uh, I love the new powers. Ascend is a lifesaver. Yes. I loved uh, the underground and just the realization about how that worked at the end. Just, you know, putting things, piecing things together. It was a really incredible journey. And I, I loved every, every minute of it. People say, oh, it's a, it's, you see, it's not actually a perfect game. Shut the fuck up, I have fun. Like a lot of fun. It's one of the games. It's one of the best games of the year. Probably one of the best games ever. I'd say. Yeah, I'd say that. Whatever. But again, not much to say. It's Tears of the Kingdom. Everybody knows how great it is. Everybody and their mom. You're a brave girl. 
right on to our next game. TMNT Shredder's Revenge. I got this the same day I picked up the Calabunga collection. Good girl. I was intrigued by this. I never really played much of the TMNT yep. beat em ups, but uh, I do know the work of Dot EMU. Uh, EM Dot EMU? Whatever they're called. But uh, this one looked pretty good. It seemed like a spiritual successor to Scott Pilgrim uh, vs. the World. I like, you know, really uh, expressive sprite art. Uh, the action's really good. The soundtrack's really good. And uh, it just shows that I'm more of a TMNT fan than I thought I was. Who would have figured? Another game that we could probably get the three of us together and do at some point. Because it's got, cause you can like, have like, what, seven players on at a time? Uh, almost. But I, I enjoyed it. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, I need him. You're positively evil. I'm trying to talk about cartoon turtles, and here you are, yeah, murder wildlife. Take long, yeah, girl. Well. Oh, gee. Oh, my God. All right, next game. Yaku's Like a Dragon Ishin. Everyone has been wanting this game for so long. It's like, when is Ishin coming out? When are you going to bring Ishin and Kenza into the West? When are you going to bring the Samurai Yakuza games over to the West? When's going to happen? When, when, when? You gave us the, the, the zombie game that everybody hated. Where, when are you going to get the Samurai games that everybody wants? When are you going to get them? When, when, when? Good now they're here. Day, now they came and they went. Hey, and they girl. were certainly a, a game, all right. <laughs> I was kind of underwhelmed by it, to be honest. I mean, it, it, it was fun. I beat it, no problem. But it, it, I just felt kind of just meh. The combat's kind of weak. Like it felt like no matter like no matter how how strong my weapon got, I barely did anything. I, did, I didn't really so much like the the Monster Hunter style of crafting, because then I'd have to like go and hunt for crafting elements, and that's that that's just not fun. I relied a bit too much on that. Stories. Uh, now that I reflect on it, story's kind of garbage. Basically, uh, Kazuma Kiyu, or uh, I, I should say, uh, you know, uh, whatever his fucking name is. Jonto or whatever. No, that's that's in Gaiden. That's uh, it's. Yeah, it like. Yeah, he's basically he's going under a fake name, Ryoma Sakamoto. That's right, Ryoma Sakamoto. Hey. So he's going under going under a fake name to try and uphold the the government or whatever, and they realize that he's been wrong all along, but he doesn't realize until the last chapter. And it just, just kind of plods along. And, uh, other characters from other Yakuza games show up as characters in this samurai drama. Well, but I kind of don't, re don't remember some of them because it's been so long and they're just kind of there. It's like, oh, that was, uh, uh, type, 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 type. Oh, that was the guy from Yakuza 5 who was... Oh, oh yeah, him. I, uh, oh, now he's dead. Oh, shit. Okay, well, whatever. Yeah, no, it, was, it was fine. It was kind of... It was kind of middle of the road. I played better, but I played worse. Alright, next up is uh, Street Fighter 6. This, this is, like, almost my game of the year, I'd say. I absolutely love this game. What is it? Street Fighter 6. Oh, yes. I absolutely love Street Fighter 6. Obsessed. Thanks. And, you know, I've been... You see, uh... Earlier uh, last year, I was like, you know, I guess... I, you know, I'm not really that into fighting games, really. I've only played, you know, Street Fighter 2 on Super what Nintendo. What happened to you? Where's all that... And, well, I also played a little bit of, uh, you know, Clay Fighter 63 and a third on the Super... on the uh, Nintendo 64. Back and, you know, Smash Brothers kind of counts as well. And, you know, I played a lot of Soul Calibur, and... Well, there was that time I was into Blaze Blue sure, for a while, and... Willing uh, to stack up. Well, you know, I, I played a little bit of the Persona 4 fighting game for, for a bit, and... Uh, well, I mean, all the, all the Dragon Ball Z fighting games I play... Then I realized I was more into fighting games than I thought. <laughs> so then Street Fighter Six gets announced. Oh, man! Looks great! Some of the looks fantastic! That looks Black like the game station, for me. So I better pick up Street in. Fighter V to prepare mind. and get into the right mindset. And I absolutely hated Street Fighter V. <laughs> I, I can say that with confidence now. I hated Street Fighter V. Just the, the attitude that it had, I was not on board. 
I mean, the first thing that it does... <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> so, I go into a match. And it says, Your record is zero wins and zero losses. I'm like, oh great. I'm going to get my ass beat so hard online. And it's going to record every time I lose. So, morale is already down out of the gate. Luckily, you can turn that off, but it's just kind of dumb. Uh, I really got discouraged playing uh, Street Fighter Six. Yeah. Or, 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 or Street Fighter Five. Five. Yeah. The salt was real. Like it would, it would ruin evenings sometimes because it was just so demoralizing. Street Fighter Five is a game that is specifically made for tournament play only. It is all it cares about. You can tell from the in-game ads that happen before each match. And even though I got the best version of hell, the character is and all that. It's it's just I don't know. Just going just going back, it wasn't fun. I, like I, I had more fun with four, and four an abs is an absolute steak tenderizer of a game. <laughs> so then here comes Street Fighter Six. It says, "Hey, everyone deserves a, a chance to play fighting games. So why don't you all? So everyone come uh, in and have well, some fun. We got something called modern controls. It plays a lot like like Smash Brothers essentially." So you don't have to do all those complicated button inputs that were really driving me up a wall trying to pull off. I could never pull I could so, never do this. Yeah. Even bought a special fight pad, I still couldn't do it. It was, it was madness. Street Fighter Six says, you know, come one, come all. It, you know, anyone can fight anyone. Just, just come in and have a good time playing this fighting game. And it looks fantastic and it plays fantastic. I don't care if it's uh, basically built from the ground up for casuals. It's just a bunch of hardcore guys mad that they're not going to win that $2 million. But really, that's not the, that's the point of the game. But I, but I, I poured more time more in the street, into Street Fighter 6 than I have Tears of the Kingdom. Which makes sense, because it's a live service game, essentially. Like, it's so good when they did that uh, Outfit free scandal. Well, not scandal, but uh, controversy about how all the, all the costumes for, out, for uh, Outfit 3 are like $110 or something like that. And basically, if you wanted to buy one, you had to buy enough coins that basically bought you two. You know, that's how, that's how they get you. Even though that's, that's scummy and shitty and controversial, everyone kind of like, oh well. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of shitty, but that means I'm, I'm just going to get two cautions instead of just none, instead of all of them now. It didn't really matter too much. It's still shitty, but uh, I, I, I can well, play devil's advocate. I can see why they did Maybe it. Maybe this is our man. You a bounty hunter, mister? Oh, this isn't a story bit. This is basically Maybe. just a mission. I know, I didn't want to... It depends. Do a... Well, I'm guessing you ain't here to pass the day, to turn oh, yourself fine. in, or discuss the finer points of county law. We can go ahead and uh, do some gameplay. Then I don't need to know much more than that. I was talking about Street Fighter Six. All right. One of the that? best things about Street Fighter Six is that I barely get any this salt. Here's a livestock at all. town, Mister. I mean, there's a couple of uh, sour grapes and about some losses you know, every once in a while, but nowhere well, near as bad, bad as Street Fighter Five. Nowhere near as bad. You don't hire a saint to catch a sinner. Because I can just show up, have a good need. fight, and it. And, I'll pay and you uh, well. no matter how it went, it just no it, it just doesn't feel as uh, much so, as like salt in the wound at all. What is it you need? Why don't you have a look at that? It's a very fun open there. fighting game, and uh, I am so He's glad. He's a low that down like huckster. He's been poisoning folks with his miracle cure from here to Ansburg. Killed more than Landon Ricketts without even pulling a trigger. Gets some kind of sick satisfaction out of it. Filler over at the saloon says he thought he saw him by the gorge straight north of here. You think you can bring him in? The money's good. I need him alive, though. I want to Damn. make sure the women he witted get compensated before he swings. I had a problem with this guy. I'll see what I can do. Well, good Why? luck to you. Oh, you'll see. Oh, I'll see. And we need him alive. That's an important point. Okay, alive. Sir. I got it. Good morning. And one more, one more good thing about Street Fighter Six oh, is uh, just the tone of everything. Yeah, Street, Street Fighter V is all about competitive, 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 competitive. You gotta get, you know, you gotta get good enough at the game to get to get into Capcom Pro Tour, so you can get good at uh, 
That's a competitive. Esports, esports, esports. Nothing but that, nothing but that. Okay, girl. Anyone else who wants to just have fun with the game? What? 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 Arcade mode? Story mode? Ugh! What is- why- why do you people want to do that? Just competitive, competitive, competitive! Come on! Uh, Street Fighter 6, though, is about just having fun. It's like, hey, come on, let's- let's have a fight! And, uh, it, the whole game is just filled with, like, philosophies about- about fighting and, and winning and losing. It's like, you know, strength is about a journey. It's like, you got- you gotta keep at it. You gotta- you- you, you know... You, 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 when, when people lose, they're like, you know, laughing. It's like, ha ha, that was a good fight, but I'll get you next time. It's, it's a, a lot more welcoming and uh, really just a lot more of a, a warm, less toxic environment, I say. Although, when uh, if you hang around in some of the, uh, the servers, you can see some some uh, scrubs getting angry. It's like, oh, I, I hate the drive impact. It's so broken. Why do they even make modern controls? It's just, oh, blah, blah, I'll do a comp. I love that shit. It makes me laugh so much because it's just old people getting angry that they're, that uh, yeah. new, new newcomers are getting accommodated. It's like, well, if it's a problem, you can probably count that. No problem. Yeah, it's fine. But yeah, Street Fighter VI. Uh, one of my games of the year, if it's not already my game of the year. We'll see how ba uh, Baldur's Gate 3 goes. Alright, next up. I got two more games here before we'll uh, take an intermission. I'll let you finish this mission, then, of course. Chaos Child is the sequel to Chaos Head Noah. Uh. It, it came with the, uh, the, 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 the dual pack. Now this is way better! Way, way, way better than Chaos Head Noah. Like, to to an unbelievable degree. I think it's been like uh, eight years since that since the first one. So, uh, they, they fixed everything. They, they gave us a brand new protagonist who is still kind of, you know, obsessive and, you know, delusional, but in a way that he's, you know, a lot more likable. You know, he's, and uh, instead of having, like, no drive to do anything, he's absolutely driven by purpose. Yeah. That's actually one of his downfalls. He's driven by purpose to find the the, the, the to, to solve these serial killings, but he's getting too close. Everyone tells him he's getting too close. You got to back off. You got your people you love are gonna get hurt, but he keeps uh, going and he here. keeps going, and bad stuff just keeps happening and happening and happening. And uh, it's uh, it's a trip, all right. Now, uh, they've toned down the sexual stuff quite a bit, but, uh, the, the, the violent stuff... You Benedict they've also right? toned down a bit, but in, but in a way oh, they've, sir? uh, they've ramped it uh, way up in, like, spikes. Kinda look like him. So, I'm gonna do a, a, a big old spoiler warning here no. for, uh, Chaos Child, because Not this me, is, sir. this is the moment it's where things go, good. I wanna buy some medicine. And so, chaos, so, uh, I heard Chaos Head Noah was based around these weird, thing. strange serial killings okay. that were getting exposure Ain't all over 4chan, basically. If you could yeah, help me find him. Bodies left in strange, weird positions that everyone, like, went all, went all mean crazy about them. My mother's real Well, those, uh, murders are getting kind of... They're coinciding oh, oh, uh, with the, well, the anniversary the of these murders, you know, all, woman, these, all these years I'd later. There's a connection. <laughs> I'm a healer, you know? A medical man. Well, uh, one of the murders, uh, medicine in the state. You know, <laughs> around the time that they're realizing that he's being targeted for all this. They Game's try and keep their family Mr. safe and all that, but, uh, up. his little nine-year-old sister Take gets heat. taken. What for? Apparently that stuff you're pushing is killing folk. Yeah, and, well, it's a little too know, late to save her. Partner, that's crap. I'm a healer. I got an aura. I speak to spirits. I'm a scientist. Uh -huh. Folks get real angry for no good reason. This, this is a mistake. Keep your hands up, buddy. They only want you for questioning. I have to insist that this is a mistake. Don't be a fool. You know what this is. Hold on. I'm slipping. Shit. Hold X. Oh. Okay, mash X. Always match. I, thought, I thought it was hold. You hold it. You hold L and you match it. <laughs> See, I dropped him. He fell in the river. I had to go to the Now come on, buddy. Let's make this easy. What, you're taking me in? It's just for question. Oh, hey, you saved my life. <laughs> Ain't we had enough drama? I, I'd be better off jumping. I, they expressly told me not to kill you. Oh, this is about you. 
Don't jump! Or, or what? He's gonna jump you can't anyways, shoot me, huh? Hello, Sith Lord. Please. I'll take my chance. Come here! Uh, bye, friend! I knew it. Really do not like you. So, your sister in Chaos Child. Uh, you just kind of pan over and you see a bunch of uh, boxes shaped in the form of a human. Yeah, they, they chopped up your sister into little bitty bits. Yeah. That's a little fucked. Really, the game's just a, just a downer. Chaos Child is way better than Swim Chaos Vanilla no is. Like, they actually want, like, to continue to play it. But it's just, just it's just a downer. Such a downer. It's so depressing. Especially its ending. Such a downer fucking ending. Yep, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Alright, last game for this section. A hat in time! All right. it's way, it's a way more uh, upbeat game than Chaos Child is, that's for damn sure. This is a game that's uh, essentially inspired by Nintendo 64 games and PlayStation games at the time. I'm really, I'm thinking mostly of uh, Rocket, Robot on Wheels, something like that. Uh, it's a mixed bag, though. You got, you got one stage that's essentially Super Mario Sunshine. The second stage is a uh, kind of Tim Schafer-esque kind of story platformer type deal. Almost like Psychonauts in, in a way, I'd say. Uh, another chapter is, you know, a, a horror game. So it feels like, I don't know, Voodoo Vince or something. The other, one, the other one's just another, just a big open world thing that has a bunch of stuff, so it feels kind of like Spyro the Dragon, I'd say, almost in a sense. So it's a hodgepodge of a whole bunch of different games, but it all comes together in a really cute and charming package. Cat in Time is pretty good. I wanted to do it for the channel one day. I gotta do some planning on that. Yeah, and there's other things to take its place. Okay then, girl. I think you can do yeah. that. I wouldn't be surprised if you can, if you, you can do that. Water, though. It's not deep water, though. If, if the if the thing's going over it, it's fine. Didn't even get his hair wet. Doctor, look at that while you're in prison. Since it's right next oh. door. Sir, this isn't necessary. I'm a medical man, a healer. It's all just a big mistake. Oh, I don't feel very well. Is that because I, I hit you in the head? You to shut up. Who made you judge? <laughs> I'm only in it for the money. Oh, oh shit. I don't feel well at all. You're a bully, sir. Keep it moving. You keep it moving. Yeah, yeah, life of a mercenary. Have no, have no feelings. Oh my lord, I wasn't expecting you back so soon. Uh, Mrs. Calthorpe was uh, uh -huh. just leaving. Sure. Where you want him? I'm selling the back. Didn't think I'd be back, did you? She was motherfucking doing the dirty. Yeah, you put him in here in the 
game will take care of it. Oh, there's been some terrible mistake. I never did it. <laughs> Any of it. I thought I told you to shut up, partner. But I told but you. But nothing. Shut up. And but uh, nothing. good luck. It's been real fun. You ain't much of a man. You ask folks for forgiveness, you remember this part of the guy that I've already forgotten. <laughs> sure, um, how much was you offering? Uh, fifty dollars. Here, thank you, madam. Uh, please remember what I told you. All right, no, I want to know what I want to know. He's like, I, I, I gotta go. I'm sorry. All right, we're gonna take a, a quick intermission. Take a few minutes. We'll be back for the second half of the stream where I talk about the second half of the year. And uh, we'll move on to Death Stranding. Yes. We'll see you soon. Welcome to the second half of the uh, DJ and Violet Yule Log. Yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> now this is my favorite. Yeah, Death Stranding is, uh, you gotta be in the mood for it. Shit, I'm always in the mood for it. You, got, always play it. you, you gotta understand what Kojima's trying to do with it, and, yep. um, whatever it is, I'm all about it. God, I have so many hours put into this game. Like, hundreds. It's, it's one of the greats. Definitely one of the greats. Like, I think over three hundred. So, I've got, uh, what, 29 more games to talk about? Good gravy. So, uh, why don't you go ahead and go ahead and hit continue. Get started on your delivering journey. Mm -hmm. And I can go ahead and talk about... My Little Pony Maritime Bay Adventure. So, uh... Beginning I don't think I should have any shame for this. Verifying ID. It's a Bruni back in the rear. Weapons detected. The show came out, it was, it was uh, just departure. visual eye cam. Welcome to the Sand Border Bridges. It was funny, it was cute. Don't mind it's, me. It's just a, just a fun show to watch. The game is loud, yes. I forget this isn't uh, quite the game that Red Dead Redemption 2 <laughs> is, where it has the, the quiet uh, American frontier. This is, you know, the sound of industry and, and civilization. Yeah. <laughs> the zip lines are really loud, too. So, yeah, I used to be a brony back in the day. You know, I watched Friendship is Magic. It was it was, it was was a fun show. It was cute. It was colorful. And just a lot, a lot of really good art coming out around that time. It was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was definitely a good show. But, like, around season five, I, you know, when Lauren Faust jumped ship, you could really tell that there was a change in how the show was run. And when Twilight Sparkle got her wings and became an alicorn, I was like, I don't know Is anymore. That dumb? It's that was a that was a shark jumping moment. And then when the Cutie Mark Crusaders finally got their Cutie Mark, that's when I said, you know, okay, I'm done. I've got everything I wanted out of the show, and I'm I'm done. So I haven't really uh, touched on any any pony stuff in like probably almost you know almost ten years, I'd say. Maybe like eight or nine. Whatever. So since then, they have decided that they were going to try their hand at a Netflix Gen 5. And we got My Little Pony, uh, was Maritime Adventure, whatever. It's on, it's on Netflix. It's like, oh, it looks fine, but I never really cared about it. You know, it looks harmless enough, I suppose. And then they made a game. You don't see a lot of games these days based on licensed properties. But it come to find out that this game was actually published by the infamous Game Mill Entertainment. The same people that's been giving us such gems oh, as uh, right at... that that shitty Godzilla or not King Kong game. Oh. K uh, Kong Skull Island or whatever Thank it's called. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. And uh, that shitty Walking Dead game that just came out. That was them too. Well, this one isn't as bad as them, but uh, there's there's one specific problem with this game. It's a game for kids! It's a game for kids! It's a game for young baby children! Is Kirby too hard for you? 
Like, do you play a Kirby game and just go, oh, jeez, I just can't figure this out. Yeah. This is way too hard. Actually, yes. Well, luckily for you, My Little Pony, a Maritime Bay Adventure, exists for dumb little baby children like yourself. Oh, great. If you don't know where to go, just stand still, and a little a little bug will say, "Go this way." It'll it'll come flying out and go right towards your uh, your destination. I'm pushing triangle because <laughs> to get on your horse. You you went from I I know it's <laughs> I it's tough it's tough. Okay okay. They they need to make a joy to key for PlayStation. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So you play as a doormat of a character. I don't even know what her name is anymore. But uh, she basically does errands for other people. That's the whole game. Why? She does errands for other people. Probably because she's desperate for their approval or something. I don't know. But it's uh, kind of dull. The characters are very flat. And uh, I think we mentioned this in a Clubhouse games. It ends in a race war. Like, like some di some dick bag is uh, sabotaging everyone's uh, project for this festival or, or whatever behind the scenes, and it somehow ends with, you know, Earth Pony should go away. Unicorns are wrong. Big size should not unalive themselves. And it, it, it's it's a jarring shift in tone. Except Zootopia was uh, a little bit more systemic, I'd say. You know? Yeah, well. that. I mean, I've played worse. Game Mill is made worse. It's a game for kids, it's a game for kids, it's a game for children, it's a game for little tiny babies who don't know how to play Kirby. And it was another easy platinum. Alright, next game. Please, let it be better. Oh, thank Christ, it's Cult of the Lamb. <laughs> well. Hmm. What can I say about Cult of the Lamb? It's amazing. It's, uh... Super cute. It is a game that just absolutely... I fell in, I fell in love with. See, at first I, I, I wasn't I wasn't sure about it, the same way I wasn't sure about Stardew Valley. Because it gives me something to take care of, like, you know, it's like, here, like, you know, your farm, your cult, you need to, like, pl uh, play a secondary game to, to, you know, work on that. See, I, I thought I wouldn't do good at Stardew Valley. But it was, same. But, but, it was, I it was but it was very accommodating, and, it, and uh, the gameplay was very forgiving, and it, it was a lot of fun to do. The cult works the same way. It's like, uh, you, like, you think that it's overly complicated, but uh, when you when you get the hang of things, and you get into the flow of things, it's 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 just, it's just a lot of fun. Of course, the art style is uh, is just uh, you know, just, just great and cute and all that. Part one. Cult of the Lamb is kind of like roguelikes, but uh, Binding of Isaac hurt me too much over the years. And as a result, I'm, I'm, I'm like terrified of roguelikes. I tried, I tried to play Rogue Legacy, and then I was like, man, don't hurt me. And then the sequel came out, I'm like, okay, well, you remove all the challenge, I can play you. And I think it was that and also Hollow Knight that kind of turned me off of really, really hard games. <clears throat> but, uh, Cult of the Lamb is basically Binding of Isaac mixed with a, uh, a town building sim. So I'm trying to pick my words carefully, you can see. Oh, my God. oh, don't fall now. <laughs> oh. 
They're playing Isaac right now. That's essentially what the gameplay is like. Like, they have the black hearts that damage everything when you get hurt. They got the, the blue hearts that work as uh, extra damage. Copa Land just feels very familiar. And, uh, it's very accessible, and uh, I'm glad that it's a hit. Like, I'm glad it's working in the same way like Vampire Survivors is working. Yeah. That's a game that understands what kind of game it is. It's I mean, it's it's self simple, but it's so it's It's simple and detailed. That's exactly it. All right. Well, next game. Splatoon three. I finished the story mode of Splatoon three. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. <laughs> that's bullshit. Yeah. Well, that's how that game. Without spoiling too much, you, you, you get on a rocket and you gotta fire a big gigantic laser at the, at the final boss. <clears throat> and there's a countdown. Uh, the clock hit zero as I was firing the laser. Like, if it would have gone for just a, a couple of nanoseconds faster, I would have triggered the ending. But I had to do it all over again because I didn't fire the laser on him enough. And he overtook the world and I got the bad ending. So, uh... Splatoon 3, uh... We were talking about Salt earlier with Street Fighter 6. I got a lot of Salt for Splatoon 3. Yeah. I got, a, I got two involved in it. Like, the same thing happened with MOBAs. It happened with Dota 2. It happened with Pokemon Unite. It happened with Street Fighter 5. I just realized that I was not having fun anymore. I was getting too angry. I was getting too salty. And I said, you know what? I gotta stop playing. It's kind of, I, I did it with Smash Brothers, too. I, just, I stopped playing Smash Brothers. But for everyone else who can uh, figure it out and uh, play well, it's, it's a good game. I had fun in the time that I had with it. I mean, that, that's another game that had a had a deep, deep grip on me. But I'm glad it's it's loosened now. However, I'm concerned uh, what's going to happen when that uh, side order DLC comes out. I don't know what that's about yet. Like, if, if it changes the game in a major way, then we might have problems and I have to... Relapse. Relapse. Or as, what I, the fuck? or as I say in the, the uh, Splatoonian worlds. Reloading. <laughs> now I always say, regarding Splatoon 3, there's nothing worse than a dualies user. You duelies have invincibility fr uh, frames when you roll. I hate it. And you ride that way too hard. You use it for evil purposes, and nobody's impressed. Everybody hates you. Splattershot Jr., that's what I use, and I'm, like, stupid good with it. I can't believe how surprisingly effective it is. Like, I uh, found pro uh, promise with the blob lobber. Just hang back and throw blobs at people. Just don't give a shit. Whatever. See, I'm, I kind of want to play now again, but I have to resist. I have to resist. So, next game. Fire Emblem Engage! I have come to a conclusion. I am all Fire Emblemed the fuck out. I am done with Fire Emblem until they can make, this, they can make something that really uh, raises, the, raises the bar. So, uh, rewind back to the 3DS, Fire Emblem Awakening. It's probably like 2011, 2012 when I played this game, and I loved it like so many other people did, because it's accessible. Karma Death isn't a, th isn't a thing anymore. So now I can just kind of entertain my brain playing these uh, tactical RPGs. And I, so I, I, I had a lot of fun with, uh, uh, with uh, Awakening. And then Fire Emblem Fates came out, and I basically played through all three of those. Uh, Birthright, Conquest, and Revelation. I, I enjoyed the heck out of that. 
Oh, I loved making my own my own base and everything, and you can set your own music and all that. You can put the little buildings wherever you want to, and you can bring people up to your room, and you can like blow in their faces and all that, and like touch <laughs> like touch them and all that. It, it was basically the, orig the original waifu simulator. That, that's where the joke came from. Because I love Firelink Base. It, it's one of my favorites. In fact, I put that in the trailer for uh, for 2023 uh, announcements because I thought because I wanted to do it at one point, but it was too complicated. So then, uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses came out. It's like, well, hey, you know, more Fire Emblem. Who can who can be mad at that? And I think I just got burned out on it. It was just so dry and just so, so, so dull. And I I played it uh, the first time I chose the Black Eagles, but I go I got quote unquote the last ending first so i figured out <laughs> i figured out the big revelation behind everything and 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 all that and uh that kind of soured any future playthroughs i got halfway through the blue lions playthrough and i i didn't even get to the time loop my dad's not even dead yet that's so i just kind of kind of i kind of got burnt out on that so uh i see uh Fire Emblem Engage, and this ridic- ri Like, this hairdo is ridiculous. Blue and red? What, like, what is this? It, it's- it's Pepsi hair. It looks- it looks nonsensical. So, initially, I really liked Fire Emblem Engage. Like, it was a much more intense story. The acting was a lot better. Uh, I didn't really care so much for the ring, uh, basis of everything. It- it, it just- I, I didn't pay much heed to that, and, like, whatever, who cares? Now he's jumping. What are you trying to do? Well, the characters are just really flat, I thought. Yeah, it, it, just, it just didn't have as much fun this time around. So I, so I, I made my way through it, and it just, it just kind of got worse and worse. You know, the, the story was really kind of losing me. The character interactions were just kind of lame, and it just, oh, it was just, it was just a chore going through everything. It, it, it felt like, like one character who you actually kind of felt for gets a shock death, and she's, and she's discarded without any thought, and her murderer is given, like, this five-minute send-off speech as she's dying, well, before she dies. It's just really imbalanced. And, you know, around this time, I, I was going through, like, Cyberpunk. I think the game was, like, roughly fixed around that time. So, and I was having, I was having a lot of fun with that. And I just, I was just craving for a much more, I don't know, I wouldn't say darker, greedier, angstier storyline, but something that had a bit more bite to it, I guess? For all the, the talk of death and war that Fire Emblem talks about, it just it just doesn't have any teeth, really. Because everyone's all like happy anime waifu and all that, and it's just like, yeah. how are you? Let's have a meal today. Oh, I hope I cook right. And it's just, <laughs> I'm not here for that. You know, uh, Fugo was one of the uh, advent calendar gifts, and that's a way grittier, uh, you know, story about war. So much that I can I can really play almost. <laughs> Be the true final boss in Isaac. How many years has it taken you to do that? Can't do anything in Isaac. You know, I I, I uh, dropped Hades this year too. Yeah. Yeah. See, I was gonna I was gonna dedicate myself to going through Hades because the, the game requires that you beat it like ten times. And I was like, man, I I can't do that anymore. I got through like the fourth playthrough. I got to, like, the final boss of the fourth playthrough twice and died to him. And I realized that the game wants me to go through the same four levels, the same enemies, the same weapons, over and over and over again to get just a little bit of, uh, story footage. And it just... None of it seemed worth it, and I realized that it wasn't getting get any better, so I dropped it. Fire Emblem Age I finished, and it just, it, I, I felt no satisfaction, I felt nothing by the end, I had barely any fun playing it. 
And uh, if they make another Fire Emblem game, then they're going to have to do something like really, really like make me go, ooh. Because that's what Fates did. Fates, uh, the story of Fates is that uh, your, uh, uh, what is it, uh, your, your, the son of the d divine dragon or whatever, you're, you're actually a dragon. You're stolen from uh, your family from birth and raised in another country. But then when you come of age, you uh, are re-kidnapped by your real family. And then you come to a crossroads where you have to, for these two conflicting uh, countries, you have to side with either the family that you were born with or the family that you were raised with. You know, ooh, so which one? Oh, that, that's, that's, the, that's the drama that I'm really wanting. They, they just don't have that anymore. It's just so safe and dull and just can't anymore on the Two weeks when it came to my first game on the Switch, I've never really done this so much. Did it pretty easily. Well, I'm glad that you can do Isaac so well. It's just... I don't have the patience to wait out on its... On its finer intricacies, I guess. You must teach me one day. Please, Nisko. Please. Next game! Steam World Dig. Where, was it looking for a soap opera? Um, this is where I make like a egg, 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 and then it kind of ends in kinda, a little, not really, but sort of maybe. Like. I don't know, I guess I just wanted something, of, you know, a bit more harder T, soft M, I guess. I don't know, maybe my taste of maturity is more. Anyway, Steam World Dig. Uh, it's a game that came out on, like, the 3DS back in, like, 2013, and it came out on the Switch back in 2017. And uh, it was just, like, it was, like, a, a couple bucks. Actually, I picked the sequel for, like, a song. And I figured, well, maybe I should, I should play the first one, because that's, that's pretty cheap, too. So, uh, what SteamWorld Dig is, is essentially build your own Metroidvania. You're on the surface of this mining town. There's something deep in the mines beneath, but it's all been inaccessible for some time. So, you gotta dig. Dig, dig, dig. Dig down to the bottom. And all throughout, uh, there's, like, materials that you can pick up that you can sell. There's enemies, of course, and uh, there's like checkpoints in between, so there's like a transit system that takes you from uh, the surface down to the mines, and you just keep going on and on. And uh, as you collect, uh, as you collect materials, you sell them, and you get money. You get this money to buy upgrades, so you're, you, can, you can dig more, because the rocks will start to get harder, and you need to hit them more, and you gotta get a better pickaxe to dig quickler, uh, 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 quicker. You can upgrade your health, you can, you can get like special uh, double jumps and special abilities and all that. And you just keep going back and forth and back and forth and you, and, uh, you keep uh, just, get, just just going deeper and deeper. It, it's, it, was, it was really intriguing. So, the uh, thing about SteamWorld Dig is that it's almost a game. It almost, it almost works. It's just, it's just um, it's, you can see where it's almost there, but it just needs a little bit of tweaking in the... Uh, that's why I played the sequel first and realized I should probably start with the first one to appreciate the sequel more. But we'll get to the sequel later, actually. Wink, wink. But SteamWorld Dig was a, a lot of fun. Uh, I like to have that on the channel one day, too, if I've got time. You know, there's the lull in the schedule. That's a fun one. I liked it. Robotics Notes Dash. Uh, the next entry in the uh, science adventure visual novels that I read this year. I finished Chaos Child, basically, and I just kind of blazed through Robotics Notes Dash. So, uh, Chaos Head is the hyper-violent Higarashi no Naku Koro ni knockoff. You know, horror anime of the mid-2000s, if you right. if, if you catch my drift. That's essentially what that was making, was, uh, was trying to knock off. Steins Gate is the masterpiece, of course. The time travel, dramatic mystery that just, it tugs on my heartstrings and just... Absolute perfect, perfect visual novel in every way. Make sure you get the Jazz USA version, of course. Then you have Robotics Notes. Uh, yeah, uh, Robotics Notes. It came out in 2012. 
It was the next mainline science adventure game that they made. And uh, it takes place in uh, the, the small little island of Tanegoshima, I think. And it's boring. Boring? And it's boring. It's comforting. There's a lot of really nice uh, scenery. It's, uh, you got this, this, this chill vibe where everyone just kind of hangs out, watches anime. Part of a robotics club, so you kind of make robots. And one day you find a mysterious pearl from space that can power robots really, really well. So the idea of making giant robotic anime mechs is now possible. Everything's run on AR now. It's like in the future and, you know... Oh, it's just so dull, though. It's so dull. I mean, there's a little bit of intrigue, but it's just... You know. I didn't really have a lot of fun with it. But I kept playing it for some reason. I think it's because I just... Th th these characters just, just kind of just kind of flat. They just kind of... Just, just meh. Just dull. So you'd figure the sequel that actually has character... Or, yeah, the uh, Robotics Dash here that's... Uh, You'd figure that because it has characters from Steins Gate, I'd be more interested. But they brought the wrong one in. They brought Daru in. Now, now Daru is of course a good character, but he can't carry the show. And it's just, it's just it's more dullness. It's just, just dreary. It's, it's just boring. was not all that engaged. But I'd, but I'd rather take boring and kind of sleepy of a tone than the horror that Chaos Head Noah gave me. And I'd rather take a cute little anime nerd story over a story as depressing as Chaos Child. So if I gave uh, Chaos Head Noah a D, I'd give Ch uh, Chaos Child a C minus. And I give Robotics Notes a C+. It's about where we stand now. Yeah, no love for my Uri. Oh, no. Okabe shows up off screen without any, any words and a phone call in the final chapter of Robotics Notes Dash to take care of the final boss, I suppose, but that's about it. Now, fortunately, I'm playing through uh, Anonymous Code. So I was worried that that was going to stink, too. It's way better. Like, it's not as good as Steins Gate, I've, I've determined, but it is still really good. They got some really good gags, some really intriguing moments. The way they reveal stuff is really good. I recommend Anonymous Code wholeheartedly. So, thumbs up for that. The thing about Anonymous Code is that you need to play all the other science adventure games to really understand what's going on. Like, I think they even uh, reference Occultic 9, a science adventure game that isn't even here yet. So I had to import it. And that game's not even finished! Started out as a, as a light novel series, I don't think that's completed yet, and then it went to an anime series that kind of goes on only one aspect out of nine. And then the game is almost, so like, not all that finished either. I mean, that's why mages is in insolvency because they spent so much time on occultic nine a, uh, a property that doesn't even do anything a property that's not even complete yet and they have no no reason to complete it uh. heck they said for this next uh, entry into Steins Gate they said well you'll probably see an anime before you see the game first I'm like what kind of kind of bad ass backwards idea is this can you do the air dash glitch in this game? I don't know what that is. Sam, just check. See, Vi and I, we played this game straight. Completely straight. Alright, next game. Dangerous! That room is so triangulant! Oh, I love uh, Strong Bad. I love Homestar Runner. I'm so glad that the Brothers Chaps are still around doing stuff like this. Just kind of getting together every once in a while to make something fun. Really hoping they do a December Wing special this year. That'd be neat. 
So uh, we we uh, talked about Danger Esque on the Advent Calendar. It was, I mean, uh, initially I was going to put Poker Night on here, but then I thought I'd rather have a game that people can actually, you know, buy and play and enjoy, rather than just a, another average poker game. Besides, I already had Klondike Solitaire, so I already had a card game. But Danger Esque, uh, I was uh, not only impressed by how uh, shockingly funny it was, you know, it was, it was very charming, but how uh, kind of intricate the puzzles were. I've been uh, following a lot of philosophy about uh, adventure game design, you know, the good from the bad, what makes a, a good adventure game puzzle, a, a, you know, versus a bad one. How do you reveal things? How much of a leap in logic do you have to do so that way there's like, you know, a little bit of guesswork between that. And uh, this game does that quite well. Just kind of, just, uh, they give they give you room, they give you certain objects to, to, to click on give you an obstacle and you just got just kind of click around think around and just go huh the way they reveal stuff the way they reveal information the way that the that strong bad interacts with the with the background and all the items just uh just really works well brothers chaps do a lot of good work when it comes to like retro games like this. They've, had, they've had years of practice and of course you got to bring up strong bad school game for attractive people a game that I would love to do for the channel if it weren't the fact that Strong Bad would just steal the show. It would just be us kind of watching and just, you know, giggling at what it says. So, uh, they released another game, uh, recently, alongside Danger S. It's called, uh, Homestar's Halloween Hide and Seek. That one's only three bucks and it's like about an hour long. I don't recommend it. <laughs> There's a reason why. Uh, there's a reason why Strong Bad is the star of, of the website. Because he's he's a better lead. He kind of drives you know the the comedy forward better than Homestar does. Because Homestar's stupid. Yeah. So playing an adventure game where you play as Homestar doesn't really gel too well. I don't think. So, any, so uh, I wish that they would make more uh, of, uh, you know, Strong Bad Adventure games, not not so much just dangerous, but uh, just you know, more stuff like this in general. I think if they just get together and make a fun little adventure game every once in a while, and everybody throws them a whole bunch of $8 bills at them, then I think that'll be just fine. We'll have Homestar going for years yet. All right. you have a Santa? Oh my god, that's right! Yeah, it's, 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 it's the holidays. I know it's a Yule special, but, uh, you know, hey. That's special, really. Next up is Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon! I have a soft spot for mechs, I realize. I think it's because I have a soft spot for power suits. What are mechs but gigantic power suits? Good work. I like uh, Metroid so much, I think. Awesome power suit abilities. Right. So I, I happened to just stumble into Armored Core 4 Answer, you know, from last year's uh, Advent Calendar. And uh, I really liked that. Just something about that really just kind of clicked with me, you know. I, 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 understand, I understand what it was about. I didn't play it for too long, but it, it just really kind of... It's like, yeah, yeah, this is good. I didn't. I didn't go on to Armored Core Five or anything. But then I come out uh, with Armored Core Six when From Software has now reached their apex. I'd say, yeah, it's worth picking up. And uh, this was a lot of fun. And this is, a, this is another game that was, uh, at the same time, welcoming to newcomers. <coughs> Excuse me. Talking a lot. My throat's going dry. <coughs> But, <clears throat> Armor Core 6 is uh, not only accommodating to newcomers, it's also good for uh, for old-timers as well. And uh, it also works differently than every Armor Core since it, so there's like a great equalizer. Well, it's, it's, it's certainly challenging. I feel, I feel bad that I had to rely on uh, dual Zimmermans and the Moonlight Blade for uh, the entirety of the rest of the game. Got me through, though, whatever. 
But uh, I, I had a lot of fun with this too. This was a, 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 a great game. It's uh, going to find a, it's from the guy who made uh, Sekiro. He's, a, he's the director of this one. I didn't take the Sekiro at all. He was asking something to me that I, did, that I didn't want. I, did, I, I, I couldn't give. Armor Core 6 is much more forgiving. And uh, it's just another good philosophy behind it, that uh, good from software philosophy. Yep, great, great, great game. Great game. I don't know if I'd ever do it on the channel, though. It'd be kind of hard to start from scratch again. Where are you headed to now? The collector. The collector. Is that Conan? It's a cosplay. <laughs> oh, that's the Famitsu guy. Yeah. Right, yeah. Next up, Bum Rush Cyberpunk. Hey, Sega. It's great you're bringing back Jet Set Radio and all that. Too little too late. We've got this in the meantime. These guys had the uh, unenviable and ambitious goal of making Jet Set Radio for a new generation. And they fucking nailed it. Beginning scan. This game has, without a doubt, the best soundtrack of the year. Every single track is handpicked and just it, it, it just fits the mood beautifully. Uh, Gameplay is a lot smoother than uh, previous Jet Set Radio games. Yeah, that, that double jump is certainly something. Don't know if I like uh, the... Uh, Jet Set Radio Future method of uh, the, the world being split up into certain chunks like that. With no real fast travel system. No, not a big fan of that. Favorite songs in the game? Oh, dude. How could you ask me such a question? Where do I even begin? Uh, Get Enough. That's, that's, uh, you know, all, all three of the Naganuma tracks are, are fucking fire. Uh, I love Ollie, precious thing. <laughs> the uh, ass, 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 ass song. Uh, I Wanna Know by Two Mellow. That's, that's another perfect one. Over here. Yeah, just, the, the whole, whole damn soundtrack's so good. But if I had to pick just one, just one, it would probably be Get Enough. Beginning scan. Scanning bridges. I, I mean, hey, I just can't get enough. ID. Track that plays when you're Hello. fighting the bosses and all that. Yep. That light switch song, that's so good. God. It's like, see, like, the game's good and fun to play and all, but, like, like the soundtrack is what makes it. Ooh, yeah, you can paint things yellow. See, I've been thinking about doing the Jet Set Radio games on, on the channel, but, uh,. It's the soundtracks that I'm kind of dodgy about. It'd be easier to do Bomb Rush Cyberpunk, but I'd love to do the other two someday as well. I knew I was right to call we'll it. We'll see. Take care. Oh, but Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. Oh, so good. So good. Good work. New order Sega's available. got a lot to, to live up to if they want this jet this new Jet Set Radio to to do any good to do any numbers. Next up is SteamWorld Dig 2. This is basically a uh, a full realization of what the first SteamWorld dig was trying to do. The graphics are improved, gameplay's tightened up, uh, the progression is is a lot better. Uh, it's, it, uh, it it it's just an improvement in, in every way, and it feels like and like the 
the real game that the first one was trying to be. It's the way that things are revealed in that game, too. They're just, just, just the, there's been some like, oh, wow, moments. Like, oh, that's cool. It's neat. It's Weapons smart. It's better than you thought it'd be. It's just, it just something I tried one day because I had like five bucks to spare. It's like, yeah, I can buy both of these games. We'll see how they work. I've been, I'm in the mood for a Metroidvania. Check them out, and they were they were pretty solid. I come to find out that it's actually all part of a whole series, Steam World is. They even made like a pseudo Minecraft type game as well. Steam World Build. But hey, if they ever made a Steam World Dig 3, I'd show up. I'd show up. Hey, here. Here. Next on the list. <laughs> This year's Halloween special, Paranorma Site, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. I am an unpleasable snob when it comes to anime stuff. I'm, I'm difficult to please, I'm sometimes even hypocritical sometimes. Yep. Paranorma Site scratches every itch. I adore this. This is uh, certainly a horror uh, uh, property. But it wasn't like overly violent or gory or it wasn't just sad porn for sad porn's sake. I, lo I love the art style so much. There are a lot of really good jokes. I didn't feel like there was like a whole lot of tropey bullshit going on. Like I, like, I, I saw uh, the, uh, the, the detective partner and I thought that either he or, or uh, the cop we're gonna be the bad guy at the end. I thought they were, they were the mastermind because that's how Chaos Head Noah went. But no, it was it it, it took me by surprise. It, it it kept me guessing because uh, it was all about misdirection. It handled it so well. That's another game that you know, like, it understands the medium that it's part of so well when it does its reveals, its, its plot reveals. And all that. Weapons restriction. Ghost Trick did, did the same thing too. Just, it just understands its medium so I really enjoy it. Love to see more though, love to see more cursed mystery stuff like this. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Open Death Mark 2 uh, lives up to the hype. Long time for that. Jesus Christ, you guys, you came out of nowhere. Don't kill them. They did, they don't. Good. Next up is Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. So, uh, I've tried three times to play a Monster Hunter game. I tried with Monster Hunter 3 for, uh, oh wait, it was uh, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite for PSP. Hello, Iki Kurogane. Yeah, I, I tried uh, Monster Hunter uh, three times. First one, first one was uh, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite for PSP. Couldn't get into it. Too much loading. I didn't understand it. Way too hard for me. Dumb baby gamer. Then I tried uh, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate for 3DS. And I, I tried it for a little bit. I kind of got somewhere, but it was just far too obtuse and I, I couldn't really get into it either. So I just said, well, okay, then Monster Hunters is not the game for me. I, 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 I just can't do it. But then Monster Hunter Rise came out, and I, I checked the, the sales data, and it says that it sold 5 million units in a month. Uh, Ever so <laughs> or like in a, in a week or something like that. Just 5 million units in one month. That's, that's crazy. Again. That's unheard of. How can a game, that, that, how can a game this niche sell this much? So, I took the dive and I said, okay, last chance. I'm going to see if I can bend over backwards far enough so that way I understand how this works. And it finally clicked. And I sunk a good amount of hours into it. Probably about like 90 hours or so. Maybe a little more. I finally got, got to the end of all that. Uh, I, I had to ride on the coattails of other players a lot. <laughs> it, like, it got like a... The, uh, the way that it works is that you can uh, go on raids together, you, you can either uh, jump into a player's uh, mission and help him, help him uh, hunt that monster, or you can hire, like, open up your own uh, lobby to have other players come in and help you out. Or even just go hunting together. You know, that it's, it's that openness and togetherness that, that I really liked. I didn't, I didn't like hunting alone. 
Yes, uh, we did play uh, Base to Rise once, because that's essentially how I got through the game. I got through the game by riding on the coattails of other players to the point where I would actually play late at night, because that's when the Japanese players would be awake and playing. The ones who uh, understood all, all the intricacies better than I ever could. So they're the ones that do the most damage and uh, have all the different mixtures and the different traps and all that. So I just kind of ride in on them. I've had several missions where I would, I, I would come in, take a few steps, and they already killed the monster. And so, hey, good job, guys. Good job. Yeah, thumbs up. Thumbs up all and I, then that's that's kind of how I got through the game, just kind of by riding the coattails. But it was it was fun though. It was it was fun. I actually understood it now. Just uh, build, you know, having having my build and and uh, changing my weapons and my and uh, I guess not loadouts, but now that Monster Hunter Wilds is coming out, maybe I'll give that a try too. Get even deeper into it. I mean, I could jump into World until then, but I mean, not enough hours in the day. But yeah, Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, very good. Faith. The unholy trinity. I have no idea, no idea, how this game slipped so far under my radar. <laughs> I I I think I just dismissed it as like oh one of those uh, streamers scream horror games that it's just about you know running in a forest and something's chasing you, which admittedly is what the first game is indeed about. But anyway. Then I see some of the stuff for the for uh, the third chapter in this. And I say, oh, this is actually this is actually pretty good. Like I see the aesthetic they're trying to go for here. And I am all about it. We got like this Apple II kind of computer and the kind of vibe going to it. And just the way that uh, some of these chords combine, the way these tones kind of kind of clash with each other, it really just has a mood to it. And uh, the, the primitive graphics kind of, you know, your imagination kind of goes wild from that point. And, and I really got invested. I was really, really impressed with how deep it was, too. I was so impressed. Man. So good. <laughs> it kind of kicked off a bit of an exorcist craze that I, that I uh, went on. I, I don't know. I think I was I was uh, I, I don't know why I thought it was a streamer screen game. I think I I completely misunderstood what it was. Or maybe I just thought it was low quality or cuz it was like a, a dime a dozen analog horror game, but it's something way better than that. I, re I was really just impressed by the sound design and everything. It really had an aesthetic that I was, I was all about. Yeah, this kind of kicked off an exorcism craze I had. And uh, we actually uh, saw the Pope's Exorcist. And call me crazy, but I kind of like that movie. Uh -huh. like, it, like, it was really good. No shame in taking a break from time to time. And I think that was, like, the general consensus, because this new Exorcist movie, good Exorcist work. Believer or whatever, is, like, Garbo Terabad. Garbo Terabad. Then you you compare it to Pope's Exorcist, it's like, oh, well, well, hey, this is this is more like the Exorcist than that ever was. What the hell? Yeah, you know, the rotoscoping on Faith was also another good one. Just the way that it would just kind of pop in. That that also added to the A static. They really made something special, and I'm 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 so impressed. Oh, it's so good. Fuck, I might just play that instead. <laughs> All right, I got about, uh, let's see, six games left to talk about. On to the next one. Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man as well. 2. Uh, yeah, no. It's excellent games. Insomniac can't be stopped. Leaks be damned idea why they had to spend so much money on Spider-Man 2, though. I mean, it's a, it's a fine game. It's not $300 million worth of a good game, but okay. 
see, this was nominated for so many uh, awards at the Game Awards, but didn't win any of them because it was just, it's just good. It's a solid, decent, a rank game. Thumbs up. But it's in a year that's full of excellent, like, dream come true games as well. Like, if this came out last year and Elden Ring didn't come out, handily game of the year. No question, no doubt. None at all. But it was still really, really good on its own. It was still, it was still fun to play, and uh, I'm sure they're going to make uh, more. Because they left the door wide open for several DLCs, and there's a sequel happening, of course, you know it. They made something special here, and uh, I know it's it's your typical open-world uh, beat-em-up kind of action kind of stuff, but it's solid. Works really good. Flows really well too. It looks nice too. Yeah. I gotta make my base. familiar. Death Stranding Director's Cut. Wow. So I have this uh, installed on my PS5, but I have I got the disc version too. It's kind of nice to just pop in every so often and play Death Stranding. So I just sat through and I uh, just went through the the ending, ending few things of the game, the ending story bits. Now you gotta you gotta kind of be in the right mindset to understand Death Stranding. And Fi and I, we are definitely on that mindset. Everything that, that everything that uh, Kojima was trying to do, we were like, yep, got it, cool, it's all good. Well, they gave out uh, the director's cut instead of the original one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, it is the best version. I mean, this uh, added road that they put in like, I can't live without it now. Yeah, no. Just so you know, I put something to... Go ahead. Seeing you in a... Keep... Shush. Good work. This is a game, it's, it's just... It's, 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 it's very zen. I don't know. Carrying around uh, packages on a road that you helped build yourself, on a motorcycle that you paid for with your own materials, that you painted, that you accidentally crashed because you drove off the road, but thankfully someone left their truck nearby so all is saved. I don't know. It's another game that you can just kind of come back and uh, spend some time on, and it'll always welcome you. Yeah. It's always praising you. Like, I get likes all the time every time I log in. Oh, yeah, that's another big thing. Uh, the, the, this game is so happy that you are playing it. It uh, gives you likes all the time. Every time that you deliver something, they're always like, Wow, that was fast. Man, you delivered this much? Oh, it's in great condition. Thanks, Sam. You're great, Sam. Thumbs up, Sam. It's it's uh, it's like tummy rubs and head pets. They're very nice, and I like it that uh, this game does that a lot. So that way, when the game asks you for more difficult stuff, you're like, all right, I'll do it. And then you do do it, and the game goes, wow, good job, Sam. That's incredible, Sam. We owe, we owe, we owe you all, Sam. Now, the thing is... It's a Kojima game, and there are some oddities. Oddities, yeah. Let's see if we can think of three weird things about the game that we just didn't vibe with. First one is the most obvious one. Chiral Artist. Yep, the Chiral Artist. The Chiral Artist. The Chiral Artist is, uh, alright, so, uh, there's this... What a weird thing. So, uh, there is this, uh porter in the desert 
He he is the junk dealer. And uh he was simping over this girl who he's been childhood friends with forever and all that. But then a raid happened and then uh she was allegedly murdered. And so he closed himself off from the world and now we can't reconnect America unless we get his uh his system back online. So, come to find out that she's still alive. But the thing is, uh, Chiral Artist is, uh, it's a trend that Kojima does. He finds a pretty model, and he's like, I want her in my game. I want her in my game. I think he did it with Stephanie Justin, basically. You know, he, I, I bet he saw her on, on Instagram. He's like, I want her in my game. I think he saw this model on Instagram and was like, alright, I want her in my game. I want a rotoscope to get her in here. Get her in here. <laughs> She's not a very good actor. She's uh, very childish. And it's like when uh, Steven Spielberg tries to uh, be whimsical when he involves young children. Yep. It's, it's Whatever kind of levity you're trying to sell, it does it just ain't working for me, man. Uh, second thing would be uh, the ending the, the, one of the ending story bits where you're just sitting on a beach and Amelie is just talking at you about stuff. It goes on for way too long. Huh. I don't care about that. And the third thing is this fucking brat! Whatever, I love BB. <laughs> Don't even go there. See, I got this stabilizer. I can use that. I can do that crazy jumping, but I don't want to. It's another thing about uh, director's code. It. You can like get a jetpack and do like a stabilizer and jump off of these ramps and get crazy distance. Another thing I didn't I didn't gel with. There's a scene where Sam and Amelie are running through the beach, like frolicking on the shore of the beach. It looks ridiculous. It looks, ridiculous. It looks absolutely silly. I mean, it, it's supposed to be weird and wrong and not correct, but oh right, uh, the 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 war dreams, I guess, in between chapters. Yeah. Those kind of suck. Yeah. They suck for me a lot. <laughs> Ooh. But, for the most part, Death Stranding is an absolutely amazing game. Kojima has done something really special here. I'm, I'm all about it. I uh, really hope the sequel turns out to be as good as he says it is. Oh, you know it will. I don't have any doubt. I can't wait. All right, next up, Super Mario Brothers Wonder. It didn't take until a side-by-side -side comparison between animations from New Super Mario Brothers Wii Deluxe or uh, U Deluxe and Mario Wonder to realize how flat it has been all along. I feel like with this game, they like went all out on the art assets. They made it as vibrant and as colorful and as animated and as just eye-popping and and appealing as they possibly could. And there's a reason why... Uh, th this is one of the Game of the Year nominees, right? I think it was. Yeah. There's, uh, and there's a reason for that. It's, it's just so well made. I think about nearly every single level had me going, oh, wow. Oh, hey, that's cool. Oh, that's neat. Oh, cool. They had so many fresh ideas. It was, it's just, it was an absolute wonder to, wonder to play. <laughs> I 
really thought that the talking flowers would get annoying, but they didn't. Like, I think I read on Twitter uh, once uh, that kind of made sense. Like, somehow they made... He's right behind me, isn't he? Somehow they made that funny. And charming and appealing. Uh, we've entered a new age in Mario, I think. Now that Charles Martinet has uh, moved on... We're, I think we're entering a, a a big media push for Mario. Don't tone it down, Mr. Gamecraft. I don't know you see. We're, we're entering a new age of Mario because, you know, we're getting movies now. We're talking about extended universes. We're getting a, a, a Zelda movie now. So... So we're, uh, Someone's happy. we're seeing a big push for Nintendo here to get into other mediums. It's, uh, going, going well so far, I think. There's gonna be some bumps along the way. There's gonna be some cringe. Get, get prepared for that, people. <laughs> Mario Wonder was, was, was a great game. I love the Mario movie. I think, I think we're in good hands so far. Nintendo is pretty good on their brand perception. Your favorite songs in this game? But there was a ghost. Yeah. Alright, three games left. WarioWare Move It. Not a big fan of this game, to be honest. It should have been a shoe in It's WarioWare Smooth Moves 2, right? It's essentially doing the more motion control portion of WarioWare and bringing it to Switch. It isn't very good, though. I'm not, 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 not a fan. I mean, not only is it, uh, it's just, it's just, it's just, the different positions that they make you do, a lot of them are kind of really out there, not very intuitive and kind of finicky, finicky especially, is the word. Just not as tight, not as precise. And it's just kind of empty, too. There's barely any unlockables. It's a, it's a, it's a little bit of fun. The animations are, are charming, of course. New guy doing Wario does just fine. But it's just... Like, I had more fun playing Get It Together than Move It, and that's kind of sad. But hey, just goes to show... Oh, my favorite WarioWare game? Just about to say it. Warrior Wear Touched. The only ga the only Warrior Wear game that's ever gotten close to being as good as that is Warrior Wear uh, Smooth Moves. Under that, probably Warrior Wear Gold. Warrior Wear Move it's probably towards the bottom, standing tall above Warrior Wear Twisted and Warrior Wear uh, Game Warrior. I love, but uh, I love to do Warrior Wear Touched one day. That game just, that game makes me smile. Deep, deep level. I have Warrior Wear DIY. I could make my own someday. They'd probably be like, you know, dirty and X-rated though, so I probably shouldn't do that. All right. Next one, the Super Mario RPG make. There's an eye catch at the beginning of uh, Mario RPG. A little, you know, little song plays, a little, little vignette plays, bits of gameplay. They remade that for this game. What? I was brought to to tears when I saw the, the this remake. Just, you know, the, the heavy breathing, just, you know, water in the eyes, just, like, uh, it just fell <laughs> Fix my generator! She's really <laughs> Yeah, the Mario RPG make is, uh, an absolutely astounding piece of software. They they made the original 
revamped it, made it shiny in HD, and they, uh, they said, We're so sorry it was so hard before. Here, we'll do everything in our power to make it as easy as it can be. Okay? So now, when you punch them, you can hit, you can hit them all on the screen if you do it right. Uh, we made it so you can you can uh, hold a lot more items now, so you don't get hurt as much. Uh, we 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 gave you a, an all-out triple attack, so you can do a, like a screen wiping thing or a special a special move to make it even easier. You, do you remember that 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 uh, hidden chest at the beginning of the game that was almost inaccessible? Well, now we made it that uh, accessible again by putting a toad here, so you can get up there whenever you want to. We 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 gave you a thing that you can you can find the hidden the hidden chest better. We made it so much easier. Just please have fun, please. Oh, it's just it, it's a lot. It's it, it's great. It's my childhood brought back. We did a great job with it. Uh, what more can I say? Same I don't know. More. More? Uh, okay. Say more. Well, um, I, I cried a second time. It, it was when I beat the final boss and we were getting that last star. They were kind of, even though it was that pre-rendered cinematic cutscene, they were still kind of doing the movements that they did in the Super Nintendo version. When, when Gina was going back up, and that... That got me again. Yeah? It's a lot of memories. I, I, I had a lot of... A lot of fond memories and just joy attached to this game. And this game just unlocked all of them again. Probably need to do it on the channel at some point. Like hey, when people put a sign, like, right there... When there's a distribution center... And they can just fucking help build the road. Maybe that's the joke. They're trying to. They're like just a bunch of lazy pissants. Yeah. People just help build the road. It's not that hard. I've been watching. Well, I thought I had more games beaten by this point, but uh, this is around the time when Advent calendar is going on, so I'm really busy at this time. Yeah, busy right now, actually. What am I doing talking about video games? This should be working right now. <laughs> but I did manage to beat the final game of the year that I'm beating, at least for this one to talk about this year. Black like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name. Also known as the stopgap to keep you entertained until Like a Dragon 8 comes out next year. Is that the one that you were crying about? It wasn't me. It was Kiryu. Right. I meant what I thought you were crying. The ending of this game is very emotional. It's, uh... It ties up a lot of dramatic loose ends. It gives more of a satisfying finale that Yakuza 6 never really gave us. This one feels more, like, definitive, like we can kind of move on a bit and reach newer ground. Which is what I think this new, uh, Like a Dragon renaissance is doing ever since they did Yakuza 7. The turn-based combat and new protagonist. They're trying to shed the old uh, identities and try and reach new heights and do new things. That's why we got the, you know, the Judgment series. That's why uh, we got, uh, we're going to Honolulu now. We're doing, we're doing turn based stuff now. It's a Dragon Quest ripoff now. It's like a Dragon Quest. Haha, -ha, see? Haha. Yeah. <laughs> Haha. But uh, this game was essentially the Yakuza 7 we never got. I mean, uh, I, got, I got the Chinese version of this, actually. No, no, I'm not trying to the, uh, the Hong Kong version of this, I should say. It's essentially called Yakuza 7 Gaiden, the man who erased his name, so. Or Like a Dragon 7, I'm never gonna see that. Yakuza rolls off the tongue so well. Like a Dragon doesn't. Yeah. Like a Dragon, like a Dragon. I mean, I guess it makes sense because little by little they're moving away from the Yakuza lifestyle. That's basically what uh, the, the finale of this game is. It's the dissolution of the, of the Yakuza. I'm making sure that goes over smoothly. That's what Yakuza 7 was all about. I need to make guardrails for this one. No, it's like... Where I fix it. I'm gonna go down. Oh. Oh. Well, 
That's all the games I've beaten this year. That's all I've, that's all I can talk about. Game of the year, I think, is uh, yeah, it might, it's probably Street Fighter Six for me. Tears of the Kingdom, close second. A very close second. It might even change tomorrow. It might even change tomorrow. It might even change by the end of the night. It's like, nah, Tears of the Kingdom. So it called a two-way tie, so I don't feel too bad about one or the other. Both, uh, both interest me in different ways. We'll say. Alright, I think that'll about do it for us. Yeah, go, you go ahead and, uh, up there, Sam? Go ahead and make your way to a disto center and we'll, oh my God. we'll sign up, we'll sign off for if you can remember how to climb ladders. He just, like, didn't want to. I guess not. I kept pressing the button. But you guys, what's your game of the year? That's what everyone's talking about. That's what everyone's uh, throwing throwing out there. It's like, oh, this is a, this should have won game of the year. It's like, why wasn't this game of the year? So, what is your game of the year? How about you, babe? What's your game? Um, this year? Yeah. Baldur's Gate three. You know, I just. Bought that yesterday. I'm trying to get my way through it. I tried the first two Baldur's Gates, or the, the first Baldur's Gate, but too old a game for me, way too late, and way too uh, antiquated of a DD &D system for me to get into, so I don't think I got into it. But uh, this one's based on 5e, so it's, mu it's much easier, much better. Pikmin 4? Ice. I can't. Be I just refuse to believe that this is like some magic super game. I have no idea. Like, I have no idea how it is. I'm trying to think of a game that came out this year that I played. Tears of the Kingdom. Probably your best bet. God, really? Yeah, I kind of avoided. I'm now just playing it. Yeah, I kind of avoided it for so long because it was so open and so, like, dry, I thought, but... Oh, no, it's what actually... Oh, oh, wait, no, it's... Oh, wait, no, it's actually good. Oh, okay. It's the game of every year. Cyberpunk for actually being fixed and like good now. It's it's actually good now. You can, you can put Cyberpunk on there. So the game was already good. Now it works. So now it's actually like great. Mario 4 Remake, that's another good one. I had a lot- I, I, I had to play that game uh, six or seven times to get all the- to get all the, uh, the achievements. And I had no problem. No problem playing that game. I could- I could play it a hundred more times. So good. Not Baldur's Gate 3, Final Fantasy 16. Not a big Final Fantasy 6 or a Final Fantasy fan. Neither am I. But everyone said that this is a really good one, and, uh... I'll I'll take their word for it. I'm I'm very glad that uh, everyone can universally enjoy this one. Then thirteen hurt me too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get into nine, but Chrono Cross is beckoning beckoning me instead. And then I try to go there, and then Legend of Dragoon saying, "Ah, come over here." And then Grandia Two HD is like, "Oh, well, come on over here." So. I'm torn between what uh, early 2000s JRPG I should dedicate my time to. I don't know. 13 left an everlasting mark on our soul, and it won't get clean! <laughs> <laughs> of these two. All right. Any final words? Uh, happy Yule. 
Yes, happy Yule, everybody. I hope everybody's holidays have been splendid. If you're watching this on YouTube, if uh, everyone already had a good holiday. Yeah, that too. Uh, yes, my experience with Final Fantasy XIII. Uh, mm -hmm. I forgot how far I got in that game, but I got I got a ways, and then it, I just I dropped it like a bad habit. Look at my three rows of stars. Very impressive. Very good. Very nice. I literally have like I think it's two two more people, and then I have all the stars. Well, hell yeah. Well, all right, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Yep. And we'll see you on the channel. Have a good night, everybody.